Welcome to day six of our lockdown lectures. It's uh, nice to be back with our leisurely stroll through the Bible, looking at um, what some people call the, the biblical basis of mission. Chris Wright, of course, said there's so much about God's mission in the Bible that we should rather talk about the, the missional basis of the uh, the of uh, of the Bible that that God if if we interpret God's will as His mission and the fulfillment of God's will as being involved in His mission, then there is an extremely great amount of uh, material all through the Bible about about what it is to be involved in mission, what God is sending us and has sent us into the world to do. And so we launch into the, the third section of, of looking at the, the mission contracts that God made with his, uh, create, his creation, particularly with his people. And um, I'm, a, I'm a Methodist by background and serious Methodists have a take the annual covenant service very seriously it's a it's a basically it's a renewal of our contract with God we say I am no longer my not yours rank me with whom you will put me to doing put me to suffering let me be employed for you or laid aside for you um, exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. <laughs> I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. It's like really serious uh, contract. And now glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine. I am yours. And the covenant contract now made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Oh, Amen. It's really big deal. <laughs> we are serious about uh, belonging to to God and doing what He says. Now, this this emerges from this whole uh, where this first emerges is in Genesis itself with these contracts, and we've looked. Uh, well, let's see what we've done so far in the course. We've we've worked out or worked with the idea that that one's purpose what you are here for what i'm here for that's our mission uh, and mission is out of the box christianity and the definition i'm working with is is god sending his people through his people to cross barriers between people to bring about his purposes in the world and uh, that's what em emerges in these all those early cre uh, uh, creation stories, uh, and who God is, who we are, our character, God's character. And now we're looking at this the strand of Genesis that involves the contracts, the the covenants, the the settled agreements that God enters into with various parties. Noah, did you make the coffee and tea? Uh, Thanks, Mum. Have you brought it? Oh? Yes. Oh. Is that for Leslie's tea? Um, no, that's Leslie's coffee. Pardon? That's Leslie's coffee. And it, it and the small coffee. No, that's your tea. Oh, it's a little confusing. Sorry, I forgot to bring it through. <laughs> if you could bring me my coffee, I would be grateful. There's only one coffee. Oh, yes, what? that's oh. for me. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> it's the lockdown lectures it's from my house to yours that's my 91 year old mother <laughs> and my coffee is about to arrive for which i'm very grateful um god had established a mission contract with noah and the point of that contract that covenant that god would bless all humanity through all the ages is that that through Noah and his family this blessing would continue this blessing and we've got to really think about what the, the contact of content of that blessing is and as we read the Bible that of course emerges more and more clearly 
as we go through. By the time we get to Revelation, we'll have a very clear idea. Thanks, Mum. Thank you. Ah. Now, where were we? Okay. Noah, Abraham. God made this this five times repeated covenant with, with Abraham. And the the bottom line, it's not fine print, by the way. It's there in it's 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 an integral part of the agreement is that God blesses Abraham so that the waiting world, the, the world that's not yet been blessed by God, then stands to receive blessing from God. Um, so today we're going to, to see how that worked out through the generations. Isaac was, was Abraham's son, and God repeated the, this covenant, repeated the contract with, with Isaac. And I'm going to put you on screen for this as I read it. Um, the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Stay in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. I will give them all these lands and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed. This is not fine print. It's there. It's the bottom line, but it's definitely there. Because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him, keeping my commands, my decrees and my instructions. It's very important that, that we see this, that God is interested in people beyond the Hebrew people. Because often we, we think of the Old Testament as God's dealings with the, the Hebrews. It's not so. No, the Old Testament is God's dealings with the Hebrews in order to have an impact on and lovingly bring blessing to those people who were not Hebrews. And uh, we miss that. If we miss that, then we miss something uh, really important. Now, Isaac. Isaac was a well digger. Uh, the, the important thing about Isaac was that, well, the thing that's recorded most about Isaac was that he found water. And of course, in the uh, ancient Near East context, uh, <laughs> Where things are quite dry and you want to feed feed and and water herds and flocks, uh, it, water was very, obviously very important. It did not flow all year, so wells were really important. And um, it says that Isaac opened a couple of wells uh, near Gerar, and and then um, the Canaanites, who were calling the shots in the country at the time, they argued and said, no, this is, this is our water. You push off and let us water our flocks here. So he pushed off and, and went and dug another well uh, at Essek, which means dispute. And the Philistines came and said, no, this is our water. Push off. We're going to water our flocks here. You go f find water somewhere else. So he went off uh, to a place that he eventually called Sitna, which means quarreling. And he dug a well, and he found water. And the um, blow me down if the Canaanites didn't come and say, no, this is our water. Push off and go find water somewhere else. So he went along, and he found a place where he was able to dig another, another well. And no one hassled him. And he called it Rehoboth, which means space. <laughs> room <laughs> space to live and uh, many of you will know another Rehoboth won't you and uh, even and, and and then later on in verse 20 uh, chapter 26 he, he digs another well at Beersh
Where am I back again? There I am. He leaves behind a, a string of wells, sources of water. And it's interesting if God got, but it's as though through Isaac, the blessing of, of discovered water has flowed. And it's not flowed only for Isaac. It's flowed for all those sheep and cattle and donkeys and camels and the herdsmen of the Philistines as well. Blessing flows, as it's meant to do, through God's people, across barriers, to the world that God loves. Right, that's the contract. And the basic bottom line, again, is that God's um, wanting to bless all the nations. It's right there in the book of Genesis. Then, of course, Isaac had two sons who argued over inheritance and Jacob uh, <laughs> cheated his elder brother. I'm an elder brother, so I feel I'm also fairly hairy. So I feel very much Esau-like. Uh, but Jacob, <laughs> peace to Gerard, my younger brother, <laughs> um, who is not a hairy man. So there, there are... And he's much bigger than me, so I want peace with him. <laughs> um, but God continued this line of blessing through Jacob. And he continued it by making or re reaffirming the contract that he'd made with Abraham, his grandfather, with Jacob. And I'm going to put you on screen for this. Uh, Jacob's resting his head on a stone and he has this crazy dream of a ladder between earth and heaven and angels going up and down and we pick up the reading there. Uh, this is, uh, I think it's Genesis 28. Uh, there above it stood the Lord and he said, I am the Lord the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and the south. It's such so many shades of of the of the Genesis uh, idea of mission, spreading out and 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 a blessing, and all peoples on earth, there it is again, will be blessed through you and your offspring. Very interesting phrase. I am with you, says God, and will watch you, watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. So there it is. Once again, the, the, the bottom line is that blessing is, is there for Isaac, uh, for Abraham, for Isaac, now for Jacob, and the purpose of the blessing is that all nations should receive this blessing. Ah, there's the rubbish truck. We are very grateful to the council for collecting our rubbish in these times. Otherwise, imagine, imagine what it would be like. And... Um, yeah. Moving on. Let's look, summarize what we've seen in Genesis. Right from the start, God is missional. God comes or sends himself, as it were, to people to make, and he makes contracts with people. And he sends people out to, to perform his purposes in the world. Uh, God's mission contract is universal. It's through people. From an individual to a community to all peoples. That's the shape of mission. And if we are involved in mission in, in any way, we should take it very seriously. Is the shape of the mission we're involved in, whether it's a soup kitchen or a um, visiting in prison, whether it's 
living in a, a culture not our own and learning to speak and minister in a language not our own, is it shaped like this? Is it moving from God to an individual, to a community, and then out into the rest of the world that God loves? Because the bottom line is, God's mission involves blessing for all people. That's why he's so serious about the contract. So, I'm going to put you back on screen for a summary of all this that I hope you'll find helpful. Okay. Mission starts with God. Yeah, are we all focused? Good. Uh, and mission is what God wants to happen. It's his will. God's mission is the pattern for our mission. It shows humanity what to do. We learn from God, as we should. Humans are supposed particularly to work together in fulfilling God's purposes, in being involved in God's mission. But we sadly, due to the fatal character flaw that we have, we fail in our responsibility. God gets his mission on track, though, with failed people, with imperfect people. God gets his mission on track through making a covenant with individual, an individual or individuals. God wants his mission to happen through a covenant people contracted to be God's people in the world. So God's mission contract, very important, involves both blessing and responsibility. Every time we receive a blessing, we need to understand under the terms of the contract that we have with the living God, that there is a responsibility attached to take that blessing that we receive to others. I hope that makes sense. Because God's people have a contractual responsibility to bring blessing to those who are not God's people. <laughs> so, let's go to our definition there. God is sending. Let's get everything on screen. Through direct intervention and contract making. His people, by creating a formal ownership uh, sort of a contract of mutual responsibility through his people generationally to cross barriers between people uh, really to be a boundary crossing people on God's behalf to stand on the boundary of beckoning people over into relationship with God to bring about God's pur purposes in the world God wants everybody to be blessed to know him love him and serve him in his world and that's something that I want to be involved in. And, and I hope that, that all of you who who reflecting on these things with me can join in as well. Let's pray together. Father God, please help us to fulfill our contract made through the blood of the new covenant to bring blessing to those who are currently not your people. Amen. Oh, <laughs>